Welcome to DJig, who also goes by this username on TikTok. This account has a whopping 1.4 million followers, 38 million likes, and posts videos just about every day. And this person's account does well, racking up hundreds of thousands of views in every video they post, and many of the videos hit over a million views, often seven to eight million, sometimes even in the tens of millions. The reason this is odd is due to the nature of the account and how many people suspect it has quite a sinister background. The account is dedicated exclusively to preparing and even supposedly eating rotten, disgusting food in absolutely deplorable conditions and it's not an ARG. And in spite of the stomach churning nature of the videos, they continue to get views many other TikTokers would be envious of. So is it real? Is this a hoax? Who is this person and are they okay? Hi hey humans, it's Hannah. Welcome back to my channel. Or if you're new here, I do videos on creepy and disturbing things. We're gonna get straight into the video. However, this video actually does have a sponsor today and I am very excited to say that this video is sponsored by Skillshare. So let's roll that real quick. A big thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who loves learning and wants to explore their creativity and learn new skills. Invest in yourself and your personal growth. All you have to do after joining Skillshare is type in a keyword of something that you're interested in learning about. For example, like of course for me, I just typed in the word horror and there was a ton of stuff that I was interested in and now I have a bunch of classes on my list to take. I'm currently taking this class called Write Your First Horror Short Story, The Bare Bones. I've actually always really wanted to write a full horror novel someday in my life. I always get these great ideas and it was just very inspiring overall and made me really want to start writing. After I'm done with this class, I will definitely be taking the one called Explaining the Criminal Mind in 60 minutes introduction to the psychology of crime sounds so fascinating and i would bet that anybody watching this video would probably also find that class pretty fascinating skillshare is ad free so you get to stay in the zone while you're exploring these new skills new premium classes are launched every single week so there's also always something new to discover and the entire catalog is now available with subtitles in spanish french Portuguese, and German. The first 1,000 people to use this link will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Check out the link in the description and the pinned comment below. Thank you again so much to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. All right, let's get right into this weird TikTok account. For this video, I will include some footage from the account. However, most of it is going to be censored or blurred a little bit. And that's not even for YouTube's sake for once. I don't even think this would technically violate their terms of service. Honestly, I'm doing it for your sake. I took one for the team and, you know, immersed myself into this account because, well, it's my job. But I can pretty much guarantee that if you do go look at the unblurred version, the real account, it will make you nauseous, if not full on sick. If you really do wanna see it, of course you can go to the TikTok account and look for yourself. However, I thought I'd make this video with just slightly blurred versions of the videos so that people who wanna know what's going on can understand what's going on, or at least as much as we know, without actually having to dive deep into the TikTok account itself. Because I'm sorry, there's just no debating the fact that this account is disgusting and it's obviously the purpose of it. Also, as for the creator's gender, I am going to be referring to this person as a he, not only for clarity's sake, but as I will explain later in this video, I'm actually pretty confident that it is a he in spite of all the debate that says otherwise. All right, so as we've established, this account is exclusively devoted to preparing and supposedly eating rotten, moldy, bug-infested food. It gets more disgusting as time goes on as if the creator is almost trying to one-up himself 
as time goes on. So here's some examples from the account. His first video was posted on March 12th, 2020, so almost two years ago now. And the first video that he posted was just random comments all in Russian. Several people in the comment section say that the comments in the video are just trolls and hate comments, such as, I've already seen this, or you were better before. So the next few videos we go, and it's just filthy food videos. But then on 12 11 2020, the first pretty concerning video was posted. Now, let me just be clear. I I've looked at many of this person's videos, however, there's like hundreds of them, but I've watched many of them and I cannot see any evidence that this person is actually harming any of the animals in his videos. Obviously the animals are being neglected. They shouldn't be in a environment like that. I don't think there's any debate there, but just so you know, I mean, the account's pretty safe to go watch. He never harms or does anything mean to the animals in the actual videos. This video posted on 12 11 2020 was still odd and concerning. The video is like of some newborn rat or mouse and it's just a few seconds of this little newborn rodent just like wriggling around. A ton of the comments on this video in all different languages are speculating whether he's implying that he's going to eat this next, but we never find out. If you put the hashtags that the creator put on this video into Google Translate, the hashtags translate to Putin joke and laughter tears, which I think they're referring to the emoji. And then a few days later, there's a video on 12, 18, 2020, that is just the reveal of this like raw looking full pig's head. I will spare you a clip of this video as well. And then a very popular type of video on this channel features his microwave. So the microwave is talk of the town on this channel because it's probably in the worst condition that you could ever find any microwave and it is a miracle that it functions or works at all, which maybe it doesn't and he's just using it as a prop. But these videos always get a lot of engagement because people comment about how disgusting the microwave is. And we all, I think, can relate to the disgusting microwave thing and not wanting to cook our food in it because we've all probably had coworkers before in our lifetime. And then the hashtags on the videos that the creator uses often say something like yummy or dinner or fast and yummy. And most likely the purpose of this is just so that these kinds of videos, especially with the views they get, are more likely to show up on people's For You page and will also show up when you search for very, very common food and dinner recipe videos on TikTok. The other big debate about this account is that we've never seen the person's face. We know nothing about the creator of these videos and therefore we don't actually know if he's eating this stuff or not. I did find one video where they're preparing what I believe are pork tails, again, based on a comment I saw, but this person is preparing them outside over an actual fire pit, actually cooks them and eats like clean looking bread with them. And then it shows at the end of the video, him actually taking bites out of this, not his face, but you can tell that he's taken bites out of it. So most people believe that he's not actually consuming any of this food, but either pretending to or saying that he does or implying that they do just for shock value. However, on the other side of this debate, I have come across comments of people saying that they caught his live streams and that he actually consumed some of the food, the rotten food on the live streams. And with that, there are also several videos that I found where he does like pick up the food and make it seem like he's taking bites of it. He could be faking that. However, there's a video from June 11th, 2021, where you can see almost a full shadow of a person in the video. And it does unfortunately really look like they are eating the food. Maybe they're just holding it up to themselves and very quickly ripping some of the food off or push or like dumping it somewhere else. I don't know. I hope that's what's happening and they are just faking it. But there are a couple indicators that make us wonder if he is eating some of this. And then of course, many people are very concerned about the animals that are shown alive and well in the videos, just because the animals are obviously in a pretty bad environment to be living in and others fear of course that he's eating them, such as the fact that he has this kind of pet duck in recurring videos, but then he has other videos of him eating ducks 
heads. And then there's this huge debate in the comments about people saying that, no, it's his pet. We've seen this duck often. This duck is recurring. He actually takes care of this one. And then others saying that, no, they saw somewhere that it's confirmed that he killed and ate this duck. It's very confusing. So I really cannot speak to that because we just don't know. However, what I can speak to is the fact that people also get concerned that they hear children in the background of some of the videos and other concerning things like that. <laughs> However, I do want to assure everyone that at least I know that there's no children living in the home. They always, and I mean always, for every single video, use somebody else's sound on their videos. If you are not familiar with TikTok, basically you can upload a video and if people enable it, you can take somebody else's song. People like to lip sync to other people's little rants or voices or singing or and stuff like that. And you can put it on your video. And this person always takes like sounds from just random other Russian people that are just saying random things or talking about random things. And he does plays on their videos. I'll try to show an example of what I'm talking about here. <laughs> Любите грецкие орехи? Вот так вот они растут. Любите грецкие орехи? Вот так вот они растут. So we know, we have never heard the creator's real voice, and we know that the sounds overlaying on their videos are just other people's sounds from their TikToks. All right, so on February 2nd, just of this year, the creator posted a snippet of their live stream as a regular TikTok video. It revealed a few interesting things. I'm not on TikTok that much, so I pretty much never catch any important live streams there, but Evidently on this live stream, according to several commenters, the creator of the account had a friend with him for this live stream and the friend was a woman and the creator was telling his friend what to say to the audience while he was there but off screen. Apparently the creator does not speak very good English and also has a speech impediment plus wants to remain anonymous overall and so was technically there but had a friend speak on his behalf. So this woman, this friend, told everybody on the live that yes, he does actually live here and he does actually live like this, but no, he does not want any help. And I believe she said this in English. Why he doesn't want any help, we technically don't know, but I will kind of loop back to that at the end. We also know that this person lives in, or at least claims to live in Chernobyl. And this next part is going to sound like a digression, but trust me, stick with me, it'll make sense. As a very quick refresh, Chernobyl was a giant nuclear accident that occurred on April 26th, 1986 at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant in the now abandoned city of Pripyat in Northern Ukraine. The number four reactor in the power plant exploded. The initial explosion killed two engineers and injured two others, but I believe one of those injured also later died in the hospital. And while that's of course very tragic in itself, the event is so notorious for the mass amounts of radioactive contamination that it caused on the surrounding area. For just an idea of the impact it made, 134 staff and firefighters responded to the scene, but were soon taken to the hospital for acute radiation syndrome. 28 of these 134 people died in the hospital. 14 more of the victims died in the following 10 years with cancer that was suspected to have been caused from the radiation poisoning years before in the Chernobyl disaster. Another 49,000 people were evacuated, mostly from the city of Pripyat, hence why it's abandoned today. But then another 68,000 people from a wider area were also evacuated soon after due to the radiation levels in the air from the one explosion. 
Britain. And of course there was other environmental detriments and just a ton of other devastating impacts. That leaves an entire 100 square miles or 2,600 square kilometers of the dangerous Chernobyl zone pretty much abandoned to this day. So that is why it's such a big deal if somebody is living in Chernobyl to this day. And if that part is in fact true about this particular TikTok creator, all of this makes a lot more sense, doesn't it? The area has been abandoned since this Chernobyl disaster happened, and it would explain how he got an extremely rundown house, and perhaps where he's getting some of these food items. Although I suspect that most of the time he's getting these food items from the garbage in the city or something like that. So according to Wikipedia, as of 2016, about 187 people have returned to the danger zone to live there permanently. Although according to the BBC, it is definitely still illegal to live within this zone, but there's just close to a couple hundred people that do it anyway. And then there's many more people that live actually legally right on the outskirts of the exclusion zone, and they just live there simply out of poverty and the houses there often sell for, I mean, very, very cheap, as little as a couple hundred US dollars. So not only is it plausible that this person is living there, but it's probably true. They are at least telling the truth, most likely in my opinion, about this particular part. All right, so back to the gender of this person and why I've been calling him a he this whole time. Most people I would say refer to it as a he, but there are several people that argue that this is a woman and this is mostly due to the bio. This TikTok account's bio translates, if you put it, copy and paste it directly into Google Translate, it says, I'm not a man. Do not subscribe here. You will all be, quote, ashamed, not for me, but for you. So many believe that that means that it's a woman behind the account, and they say that in the bio because they're annoyed by how many people call them a man. However, remember when I made that other video that I needed help with Russian translations with a little while ago, and I reached back out to that same subscriber who helped me so much with that video, Big shout out to Sonia. Thank you so much for your help. And Sonia told me, who speaks fluent Russian, that the bio actually does not translate to I am not a man. The more accurate Russian translation says I am not a person or I am not human. And on top of that, I saw several commenters on some of the videos confirm this and say that that is not an accurate translation either. However, the rest of the translation is actually pretty accurate. So we still don't know either way whether this is a man or a woman creator, but I'm just saying that we do know the bio is not revealing such things. As for the rest of the bio saying, don't follow me, this is strange because they have over 1 million followers and they have celebrated this milestone in the past. For example, when they were about to reach 1 million subscribers, they posted a video how they had been uploading for a full year. And this is the translation I got for the video when they talked about reaching this milestone. So this is an indication to me that this account might actually be some sort of hoax or some sort of performance piece after all. Between saying they aren't human at all, which makes no sense, between saying that you shouldn't follow me, even though then they celebrate and obviously appreciate the views and subscribers they get, that just does not add up at all. Whew, okay, we aren't done. The other reason that many people believe that this is some sort of hoax is because this person obviously has internet connection, editing skills, and a smartphone. So therefore they must not be that poor or that bad off. I don't think that per se is a reason to accuse somebody of lying, however, Besides the fact that he has an iPhone, what's more suspicious to me is just how many views every single video he posts gets. Like I said, it's millions upon millions of views. And at the very least, each video he posts get at least a few hundred thousand. So my question is, is TikTok not paying this person anything? They are eligible for the TikTok partner program because you only need 100,000 subscribers. And so they actually could be making decent money from this. 
Obviously, I know TikTok does not pay their creators well just for views in itself, but it's just very interesting that they're making this many views. There's no way they're not making any money off of them. You would at least make enough to be able to afford proper food. Here's what I think about this account overall. And again, a huge shout out to Sonia for helping me decipher a lot of this. Something important to note are the accounts that DJ follows. He seems to be very selective about it. One account that goes by the name Simona posted this video on 5-22-21. Just watch, it's not gross, it's not triggering. <laughs> От WhatsApp, Facebook, его нигде нет? Стоп, я, я не понимаю, как он тогда присылает фото своего дружка? Он не присылает. Я только смогу увидеть его дружка. Отлично. Боже ты мой, я не знаю, что мне делать. Я сделал идеальное фото с моих сисек недавно. А теперь я не знаю, кому ее отправить. Его никак не отследить. Он полностью недофигаем. Призрак, если хотите. Его нет в Инсте, ВКонтакте или в Одноклассник. То есть у человека нет никаких цифровых следов. У него даже никогда не было ICQ. Да кто он такой? Я не знаю. So I went to my good friend Sonia and I asked her pretty much what the f that video was all about. All of the Russian comments, if you put in the translator, were praising the video, calling it wonderful, sensational, a nice trailer. And here is the actual reason to go back to why I am 99% sure that this person is a he or a man. This account that the main account is following all of the commenters seem to be not only Russian, but in on whatever the real secret is. Cause the main large account just has people confused, but this side account seems to have all these people that understand and they are all calling him a he. And that account holder, Simona, who they're following, calls him a he back to everybody who comments and nobody ever corrects them. So that is why I am very, very confident that this has to be a he. Not that it matters that much, but that's one of the big debates. Anyway, I am just going to read pretty much word for word what Sonia told me her little analysis of this trailer. Now, the video you sent me could be made by the person behind the account in question. The video's concept was probably to take some random social media era satire footage and mix it with messages from the DJ persona. The messages are quite tame and basically follow the similar idea. Oh look, everyone is shocked and someone, me, can't be identified through online presence. Also, I must add that the handwriting and spelling are quite neat in this video. I'm not a mental health professional, but it's sus. Whoever wrote that most likely does not have major cognitive issues. Of course, that's pure speculation, but I have to agree with her. So class, what have we learned? Someone this person follows, if not the same person, or at least one of this person's friends, posted a trailer for this DJ disgusting channel that has many themes of social media satire. While many people of course do suspect that DJ does have some sort of mental health crisis that is causing him to go through this, maybe, just maybe, he doesn't. But it's possible that the account is in fact just anti-social media, anti-consumerism commentary. This is convincing because they remain anonymous. They are clearly well enough and of sound mind enough to shoot videos, to edit them together, to add other TikTok's sounds, upload to TikTok, add relevant hashtags that would get them recommended, and push them out into popular cooking and food videos. With that, I also agree with Sonia's analysis that this place is real. The house is real and really in this condition. However, the person that's actually creating and uploading these videos doesn't live there. Rather, there is likely some unwell person involved in this, and this unwell person does live in the home, and this creator is using the person's 
home or taking footage of this unwell person and posting it on the internet, hence why it would be important to keep them anonymous. Or the likely mentally unwell person did own this place and lived there, but has either moved or passed since, and this creator found this place and uses it to film these videos. It's the perfect place to make tons of shock value footage for TikTok, and it's working. That being said, I definitely do not want to invalidate anybody's mental health. If they are really struggling and living like this, of course, that's awful. However, the amount of planning that these videos take to make, including going through the garbage to collect all these items, would more point to somebody using this very, very bad conditioned home to make their videos. And of course it's working because very few people would go this far to go viral. Plus, let me remind you all that many, many people have offered to help this person. Many people reach out to help. Many people have offered to set up GoFundMe pages for him and give him all of this support and financial help in order to get out of the situation that he's in. In spite of how much speculation there is about this account and how sinister it could be, lots and lots of people really do care about this person, are worried for this person, and want to help him. But as we talked about earlier, he doesn't want any help. When people have offered this, just like on the live stream, his friend told him, no, he doesn't want any help. That along with the very deliberate seeming trailer on a different channel just doesn't add up to this being authentically somebody living like this. If you've made it this far in the video, please, please, please leave me a comment in the comment section down below and let me know what you think. Please give this video a like. Both of those things help out the channel just a ton. And if you made it this far in the video, you obviously liked it somewhat. So I would really appreciate it if you did one of those things. And that is going to be the video for today. I will see you all next week. A huge thank you to all of my patrons on the screen, but of course, shout out to Colin Holmes, Deck of Cards, Creep Me Out, Michelle Valdovinos, Tom L, JJ, Dirty Kitty, Don, Quasi Eli, Little Kittle Cat, and Mitchell Meyer.